For most of human history, we have stood helpless in the war against cancer. That's because our immune system hasn't been able to effectively recognize, mobilize, and attack cancer the way it should. Until now. Really for the first time, with quite significant precision, we can turn on the immune system in the context of cancer, and we've seen some very dramatic examples of both disease control as well as complete remissions. It is a breakthrough more than a hundred years in the making. In the 1890s, Dr. William Coley achieved some success by injecting bacteria directly into the tumors of his cancer patients. But his results were unpredictable and radiation and chemotherapy soon became the norm. By the 1950s, immunologists had discovered that special white blood cells called T-cells were the system's foot soldiers on constant patrol to identify and eliminate enemy invaders. Cancer cells, however, cloak themselves using a signal to a molecule called CTLA-4 to escape detection. In 1996, Jim Allison found a way to block this cloaking action and allow T-cells to go on the attack against cancer. If we do this right, we ought to be able to not only cure cancer, but do it with a minimum of collateral damage, if you will, of, of, of side effects to normal tissues. Allison's work resulted in a drug called ipilimumab, or Urvoy, which was approved by the FDA in 2011. The drug actually cures an astounding 20% of all patients with terminal melanoma. And we're just beginning to discover how effective it can be with other cancers. Another one of these promising so-called checkpoint inhibitor drugs is anti-PD-1. The drug is fairly simple drug to mix. Uh, we reconstitute the drug uh, because it comes in a powder and we mix that with saline in an infusion bag. This batch of anti-PD-1 will be given to T.J. Sharp, who has just arrived at Holy Cross Hospital in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, with his wife, Jen. Battling stage four melanoma, T.J. receives infusions of anti-PD-1 every three weeks as part of a clinical trial. I had tumors in my abdomen, liver, spleen, and both lungs, uh, and the prognosis from the oncologist at Broward General was, he'll be lucky to be here in two years. The thing that gives me hope is that there are others that have come before me that are doing well on immunotherapies. I see survivor stories and they certainly buoy my spirits and say, you know, one day that can be me. That's going to be me. Come here. <laughs> Since I started my clinical trial, I've gained a lot of my strength back, a lot of the weight back. I've become much more active. Just last weekend, I was able to run a five mile charity run with both children in the stroller than if you would have told that oncologist a year and a half ago that I'd be running five miles pushing both children, I think you'd be pretty surprised. For cancer patients, their families, and their doctors, immunotherapy is a revelation and a revolution, holding out the hope that treatments such as chemotherapy may someday be obsolete. For when we can consistently mobilize our own body to do what is necessary to recognize and defeat this ancient and formidable enemy, we will look back on these recent breakthroughs and say this was the turning point in the war on cancer. <laughs>